Hi, the Mud Broker here. This is a quick little video I'm doing in response to a comment left by Cast Iron Chaos on my video about sanding cast iron. Now Cast Iron Chaos has had a channel here on YouTube dealing with cast iron for quite a few years now and it's an excellent channel. I highly recommend it. Tons of good information and he's an all-around sterling fellow besides. I'll leave a link down, this trip, down in the description so you can go have a look at him if you haven't already. Anyway, his comment read as follows. I'm sorry, but I gritted my teeth and winced as I watched you apply that sander to a vintage pan that could be as much as 90 years old. It's your cast iron and you can do with it what you want, but nevertheless any resale value that the pan had is effectively gone. Also, I was genuinely worried that the sander might crack the pan, as well as the fact that you don't need a glass smooth surface to cook on with any cast iron pan. Now I agree with just about everything you said, and I do disagree on a couple of smallish points, but he's definitely right in the fact that I should have been a little bit clearer in my video. I've said in previous videos and in tons of comments that you should never do anything to cast iron that removes metal if you, unless you absolutely have to. And I'm sure that Cast Iron Chaos, like myself, has seen dozens if not hundreds of videos of some yachts on YouTube taking an obviously very old pan that's deeply encrusted. You can't identify what it is, but you can tell it's old. Grabs a grinder, starts hacking away at the thing, and really screws up a pan that would have been worth quite a bit of money. Turns it into something that's worth just a generic cast iron frying pan price. Really damages a historical kind of piece. A good example of something like that is this little griddle here. This is a Griswold diamond logo. Let me get, try and get that on the camera so you can see it. They use this logo from the mid 1890s up until roughly 1910 and it was kind of a transitional logo between all of their pans being marked Erie to the more well-known double circle and cross logo that came later. This, has, this logo was raised, and it's not terribly bold. I mean, once I get this cleaned up properly, it'll be a little bit easier to see. But if I was to take a sander to this, this would very quickly become obliterated. At best, it would be unreadable. At worst, it would be entirely gone. And also, I'm not sure if you can see this up here, there's a ghost mark of an E after that 739, and through the middle of the 9, you can see a vertical line that's the rem remnants of an I. This used to be an eerie griddle pattern that they erased the eerie, added the catalog number and the new logo to it. Also, hopefully you can see this, this still has machining marks, little swirlies on the surface of the griddle from where it was finished at the factory and ground smooth. Sanding would remove those. Now, a lot of pans don't have them, but pans that do, you can usually get a bit of a premium for them because they don't have a lot of wear and tear on them because that sort of thing wears out with use. And if you sanded it, you would obliterate that. Taking a sander to a pan like this would be truly stupid because you would destroy the value of the pan simply by sanding away the things that make it valuable. A newer lodge like this, you don't have to worry about value, but I've said this before too, you don't need a polished surface to cook from. Well, this is a lot shinier now than it normally would be, and it's obviously been sanded. Hopefully I can get that to show without too much reflection. There's quite a bit of dimpling and pitting left. I didn't take this down to a polished surface. I just took it down enough to knock off the high spots and kind of smooth it up. Like I said, it's obvious that this has been sanded. The bottom is nice and shiny, but the sides still have the original texture, the outside of it does, and you can tell that this has been sanded on. And if somebody had sat, done that to a vintage pan, that would indeed destroy the value of it because it would be obvious that it had been sanded. Something that I disagree with Cast Iron Chaos about though is 
this pan that I had in the video. The loss in value that this pan has suffered over the years isn't because I sanded it. It's because of the pitting. Now, big deep pits like these really don't cause much of a problem. They'll just fill in with oil. The reason why I sanded this is because it had a lot of very fine pitting on it that acts almost like Velcro when you try to cook. It has sharp little edges that grab the food and the tiny little pits tend to trap air pockets and steam bubbles as you're cooking and that brings the food in direct contact with the iron and it makes it stick. After I cleaned this up, I always knew exactly what it was. That this is a Birmingham stove and range uh, Red Mountain series. I always knew exactly what this was so there wasn't any damage of going in any chance of going in blind and destroying something before I even had an idea of what I was dealing with. But in order to make this usable again it did need to be sanded down enough just enough to get rid of that real fine real grabby pitting and it was a little bit too much to scrub off with something like this. Now as for using the orbital sander if you must sand a pan this is the tool to use. The bottom of it has a very soft pad. It's a hard, well not real hard, but it's a foam rubber pad and if you tip it a little bit it's not going to gouge into the metal and if you hit the side you're not going to bang into the side. There's very little risk of using one of these. They're not very aggressive, you're not going to take off a ton of metal way too fast. So, if you can avoid it, by all means avoid doing anything to a cast iron piece that will remove metal. You never want to do that if you can help it. If you do have to remove a little metal, do the very barest minimum that you can. Now this pan is still quite pitted. Even though I've sanded it, you can't really tell that I've sanded it because the texture of the bottom is the same as the texture of the sides and the outside. But this will never sell for more than what any other pitted pan would. So the value was really lost by the pitting, not the sanding. He also mentioned that it's my cast iron, I can do with it what I want. Yes it is. It's mine. All mine. Ha ha ha! Now, actually no. This has been around for 70, maybe 90 years, and it's going to be around long after I die. If you're going to restore something like cast iron, or any other antique for that matter, you don't want to do anything that is going to seriously alter the pan, because after I'm dead and gone, somebody else is going to own this, and they're probably not going to want something that's been screwed up along the way. Something like this vintage Griswold griddle, this is going to be around for another 200 years with a little bit of care and maintenance. So always try to think ahead a little bit. Don't go destroying something that someone in the future is going to want. Don't go sanding pans unless you absolutely have to. It's really a last resort. And don't do anything to a pan that you don't know exactly what it is before you start. Once you got a pan stripped down and cleaned up, then you'll be able to assess if there's anything that needs to be done to it that you haven't already. So, that's it for this little video. Go check out Cast Iron Chaos if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.